In today's video, I'm gonna try and show you a comparison with the acceleration, which is a little bit hard on video because I haven't had a chance to get to the drag strip yet. I'm probably not gonna for a little while. So I'm gonna try and show it on video, the sort of difference in speed and power. been wombling again so I've got some bits for another project you'll find out about that later well it's actually going to be an engine stand and I've got some of these as well for another project well the weather's crap again this weekend but the roads have just dried up so I'm going to take this opportunity because the sky looks like it's going to clear up as well to try and get to be a bit of road to do the acceleration test where it rained the other day. It's not really raining, it's just it is a bit greasy though, know, but this road surface is pretty good. So I'm going in a straight line and it's not really wet yet, so we're going to give it a go. It did actually, I don't know if you saw that, the traction control light did actually come on then and it, it cut the engine a bit, so it did hold back. Hopefully it won't be wet, or it won't rain, and I'll be able to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Make hay while the sun shines, even though the sun's not shining right now. Right, I'm in second gear. Really won't be doing second, I reckon. Right, second gear. Let's give this a go. hung on it a little bit more then but I got scared. I got all the gears though. As soon as I shifted into second it, it went far off of wheelie it felt like. Um, 
finally got a wheelie on the drag strip. I probably need to calm it down with the timing a little bit to start with. to tell on the video the speed difference but you can definitely feel it through the seat of your pants and there is a good 10k an hour difference so I might pause that on there I just like to point out that all this is done in a controlled environment and I have permission from the authorities I've got the relevant paperwork here look and also, I've just realised that I keep forgetting to look at the boost gauge. I've got no idea what it's boosting to. So I'm going to go out in a minute and I'm going to film my boost gauge. I'm going to hit the highway. And this is valid for a week or so and anywhere really. So I should be okay. And also, what do you think to this camera angle? Comment below. Let me know. I've got my DJI action pointing at the boost gauge there. It's also going to pick up the rev counter and it may pick up the AFR as well. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Tune ECDU with me. And if I swipe across here, what I can do is I can list these different sensors. You can actually read these at real time, but you can also record them so you can use it as a data logger. So I've got throttle position, engine speed map sensors, injector pulse time, timing let's put on there if I select list let's get gear position vehicle speed as well hit OK so what will happen is if I just hit I've got to be connected to the actual bike for the data logger to work but what I can do is like there's just a record button I hit and then that actually logs the data so we'll do that right I'm connected to the bike now so now if I go over this side see there's a little record button there I'll just press that it's very small it's not very really easy to see and now you can see them red dots next to everything it's recording I'm not getting any more than 10 psi boost. That is because I believe the bobber frame gets in the way of the supercharger outlet. So the supercharger outlet's been modified to suit that and that's causing a restriction. So this is something I'm gonna modify in the future. I'm gonna modify the frame and the supercharger outlet so that it hasn't got that restriction there. And hopefully be able to get 15 psi boost. Um, I'm not quite ready for that yet. <laughs> so that's a job for the future. Right, so let's look at the data log. So if I hit data log, open, it's got all these saved files of the data log. You can actually email these as well. So you can do this on your phone and put your phone in your pocket and then email it to yourself so you can look at it on a bigger device. Right, so let's get to an interesting bit. There, look, we can magnify it. We we'll magnify it again. Right, <laughs> there's there's a lot going on here. So what we can do is we can hit that, and that will bring up a list of stuff we've got selected, and we can get rid of some of them. So let's get rid of injector two, timing two, and a map sensor, throttle position sensor. Yeah, we don't really need that. Okay. Oh no, let's put the throttle position sensor back on. 
So there's our, a bit of our data log. And if you, the throttle position sensor is the bright green one, and as you can see, I'm sort of wide open there. And the revs have got up to, if we hit this little thing here, we can put that on the, so about six, eight, the revs went to there. But as you can see, the injectors are at 100%, which is 10,000 milliseconds. So they're working flat out. But maybe they're not. Maybe this is set up for the standard injectors, which only work at 10,000 milliseconds. Maybe these other ones go up more. Because I don't... Because this is a factory ECU, you can't actually... I don't think you can adapt the injectors to an ECU. When you have an aftermarket ECU, you're pretty sure you have to adapt what injectors it's got and the duty cycle of them, probably for this sort of thing. So I don't know how true that is, but that's quite interesting. It's something to look into. This is... Oh, and these are your gear positions so you can tell what gear you're in. So this is all stuff you can actually use to work stuff out. It's not the best data logger in the world because it hasn't got everything. It can't measure IFR. It doesn't have a wide band oxygen sensor connected to the factory ECU. I've only got that to my AFR gauge, but I can actually get a control unit which will have a data logger on it for that, which I might do in the future, or I might have an aftermarket e ECU. Who knows where this is going to go? So that's that then. I think I did a pretty good job of getting onto the screen the difference in power it's made but i'm really looking forward to getting to a drag strip so i can know for certain and i'm pretty sure this is going to get into the tens now and the other thing i can do is i can mess around with gear ratios too now because at the moment it's got the 47 tooth sprocket on the back and i believe it's got a 17 tooth on the front so i can actually put the original sprocket on the back which will make it taller gear and that will because it's got increased torque lower down this might actually benefit it but that's the sort of stuff I, i'm going to try on the drag strip along with the other exhausts and stuff like that and i will do a comparison with the bigger pulley on it as well on the drag strip so i'm looking forward to doing all that <laughs> i really enjoyed making that video and i love making these videos and editing them and stuff it's what i want to do full time but the channel's only very small at the moment and i do want to get to that level but it's not going to happen the way the channel is right now. So I'm not sure how I'm going to go about that. But what really helps the channel out is if you share my videos. A lot of people on the internet, I've noticed, take screenshots to share stuff they've watched and stuff. But really, there's a share button down there. Click that share button and then it'll take you to all the links of where you can share the video to. That will really help me to grow the channel and to be able to bring you better content in the future so like comment share and all that good stuff and if you want to send me free merch the chances are i'll be happy to wear it for you so get in touch if you want to do that have a great day